I told you all that Tony Stark Iron Man was going to be popping the question to Hellcat and Iron Man number 20. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of Christopher Cantwrightwell's Iron Man series. I don't like the relationship, the way it's been gauged, the way it's been ex executed within the series. It doesn't feel natural for Tony Stark, but there is more to the story. Apparently, alcoholism was not enough to topple Tony Stark. He did not learn his lesson. He needs to have more demons in his life to overcome, apparently, according to Christopher Cantwell, right well. It's going to have to do with an opioid addiction. And I do want to say up front, opioid addiction has absolutely affected my life in some very serious ways. And I'm going to get into it a little bit. I don't want to like get all teary-eyed on you and explain kind of the, some of the stuff that I've uh, been through. But that's going to be a little bit later in the video. I'm going to get kind of through the details on the story, what my thoughts are about Tony Stark going through rehab and what Christopher Kate Wright well is doing that. And then I'll, I'll kind of touch in on that. So here's the details. There was more to the Iron Man 20 solicitations. This is what it says, at least in the opening. With Korvac, the power cosmic, and a nasty morphine addiction now behind him, a freshly humanized Tony Stark has returned from rehab to the world hoping to show folks he's okay. And I think the wording there, a freshly humanized Tony Stark, is key. And I believe that was very intentional on the part of Marvel Comics and likely with some input from Christopher Cantwright. Well, I believe in their minds because Tony Stark is a billionaire, white, straight character, that he is not human. He cannot be humanized just by portraying him who he is. And he must be humanized, so that we must put all of these extra faults on it. We know that that Tony Stark, as a character, has a problem with addiction. He was an alcoholic, and he overcame that. You don't need to make Tony Stark a drug addict to humanize him. And let's not forget, essentially since Marvel Comics Civil War, Tony Stark has been treated essentially like a villain. He hasn't had a lot of heroic moments in his story arc that have, that have progressed it there. They kind of cast him as the villain in that story, and he seemingly has remained in that status. Interestingly enough, Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel was cast as a villain in Civil War II, and they've done their damnedest to rehab that character and show you that she's a true blue hero. It hasn't worked because it doesn't feel right. But Tony Stark, not so much. The article begins, Tony Stark has been through a lot, both as Iron Man and as just a regular person like you and I, one of his most powerful stories was 1979's Demon in a Bottle, which saw him grapple with alcoholism, a disease that he's carried with him in the decades since, even taking part in Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Demon in a Bottle is a groundbreaking, character-defining story from David Michelini. I definitely believe he was following in the footsteps of Denny O'Neill and what he had done with Speedy. Me, personally, I feel like this story is much more powerful and has a very large very powerful redemptive arc to it and he's able to be a hero once again but we never really get that story with tony stark anymore it's cliche to do an addiction story with tony at this point and they always forget that he needs to overcome and be a better person in the end and every time he has a setback it kind of takes away the magnitude and the significance of the demon in the bottle story and the way that michelini carried it out and executed it to its fulfilling end that I think a lot of people enjoyed. The article continues, according to Marvel's description of May's Iron Man 20, a recent storyline that has him wielding the awesome power that is power cosmic, while also fighting the cosmic villain known as Korvac, will result in him dealing with a nasty morphine addiction that will ultimately send him to rehab. Yet another tired, cliche, played out story that they've been using with every single superhero. How many bat gods and spider gods and Hulk gods and super gods and all these things. They keep kind of going to the well over and over and over. That's kind of one of the things that you were hoping for that the Christopher Cantwell not being a comic book writer, perhaps liking comic books, but being a screenwriter, you know, he's, he's worked on AMC projects and stuff like that before co-creator of uh, Halt and Catch Fire, I believe, that maybe he could take some new stories and new ideas and rehab the Tony Stark character. Almost felt like he was doing that in issue number one, which I recommended. Unfortunately, by issue number two, you could kind of see the actual way he was taking the character, and it was to break him down and grind him into nothing again, like has happened so many times before. And we have certainly seen along the way towards Tony Stark becoming the Iron God, the Power Cosmic. And we've seen the seeds planted in Tony becoming the Power Cosmic, the Iron God, the story that we've seen play out with so many other superheroes at DC and Marvel in the past, that they have been saying, or at least showing you, that Tony likely has an opioid addiction that's certainly been laying the groundwork 
Unfortunately, no matter what Tony Stark does, no matter what he overcomes, no matter how many times he saves the world and the galaxy and the multiverses, and he saves the day every single time, he is at his core, according to the writers and editors at Marvel Comics, he will always just be an addict. He will always fall off the wagon, and he will always need a fresh round of rehab when they have run out of anything interesting to do with the character. The problem is they haven't really done anything interesting with the character in about 10 or 15 years. So it's just this malaise that the character's been in. And if you're a fan of Iron Man, unless you really like some of his appearances in events, which have been done well, admittedly, you really haven't been able to get a solo Iron Man that draws you in and makes you want to be a fan of the character, makes you remember why you love the character so much. They continuously fall back on the same crutch. He's an addict. He's an AI. He's not even human. He's just a robot. He's a cosmic Iron Man god. And eventually he gets tired. It's played out. It gets tiresome. Somebody, anybody, please return to Tony Stark Iron Man and return the character to its roots. The article continues. It's good to show that anyone, even someone like Tony Stark, can falter and ask for help. And from what we know about Iron Man number 20, he'll complete a stint in rehab and emerge with some better coping skills to deal with what he's been going through. The problem is that you have already demonstrated that anyone, including Tony Stark, can falter and does ask for help and does overcome their demons. The, the story's already been told, and it's never going to be told better than what David Michelini did. As I mentioned earlier, opioid addictions have affected me personally. Have I ever been a heroin addict? No. Have I ever been addicted to Oxycontin? No, I, ha no, I have not, in, in fact. But I have mentioned here on the channel that there was a lot of weird things going on in my home life when I was a teenager, and that's the reason that I joined the United States Air Force at the very tender. Well, I signed up at 17, went to basic at 18, and got out of there and decided I needed to discover what was going to happen with my life. I decided I was going to take some control because of all the chaos and the insanity that was around me. My mother, in fact, was a drug addict my entire life growing up. I love my mother. She is a beautiful woman. She loved me as much as any woman has ever loved her son. But she also could not get over her demons like Tony Stark. So I have certainly dealt with these things, and I can, can relate to what the storyline is and what they are trying to portray. But they've done it so often with Tony Stark that it's not even funny. I can tell you right now, my mother is no longer with us. Unfortunately, she died quite a, quite a while ago at this point. And then I'm kind of realizing that I'm 44 years old today. It's kind of crazy thinking about how long ago it was that I actually lost her. And I can tell you, until the day that she died, she went to the methadone clinic, you know, for her treatment, for her addiction. That essentially destroyed her life, destroyed my family's life. So I can certainly, it's not that I don't think that awareness about opioid addiction is, is important. I know that it's important. It has absolutely affected me. It has affected other members of my family besides my mother. You know, I've, I've had other close members of my family that have had battles with fentanyl and, <laughs> and Oxycontin and heroin and all that stuff. And it's terrible and it's tragic. And I don't mind them using a hero every now and again to do a story like this. There are absolutely precedents for doing it and doing it well and it being very impactful. Obviously, Danny O'Neill and David Michelini are the best examples of it happening. One at DC, one at Marvel. Tony Stark overcame his addiction, and he was a better hero in the end. Every time you have him fall off the wagon, it is a reminder that he never truly fixed himself, and perhaps there is no hope for people out there trying to get over their addiction. I do understand why opioid addiction is a curse that's going not only across America, but across the world. We certainly have our own drug addiction problems right here in the Philippines where I, where I am today. I certainly have not escaped the realities of what are what's going on in there. As far as Christopher can't write well himself, the writer of Iron Man 20 in the series, he is a co-creator of AMC's Halt and Catch Fire, which has also dealt with drug addiction issues. And he also co-created a drama called Rainy Day People for AMC, which wasn't picked up, but was set in a rehab center. There is a good chance that Christopher Cantwell and I share something in common. If we sat down and had a lemonade, we might end up talking about the things that have happened in our lives and the way that we have been affected by drug addiction and the opio opioid crisis that's going across America. And I understand that he wants to get the word out, but you need to 
pick and choose your spots. This story has been played out on the same character too many times. If this was the story that you absolutely had to tell, perhaps it was best to not ask for Tony Stark because the stories are going to be told. Maybe it's time to go do it with Carol Davers, another character. And you can tell your, your drug addiction story, although I'll say right now, with the state of comic books and the amount of character deconstruction that's going across the entire industry, there's a lot, a lot of character deconstruction. You know, it's, it's played out. It's time for hope. That's what people want when they go to comic books right now. They want to escape. Bring a little hope into our lives. I, I understand that these things are, are terrible and they need to be discussed and we need to be in the eye of people and we can't ignore that they're there. We can't. So I hope Christopher Catewell is doing well. I hope that we don't share too much in common and that he did not have to deal with the exact same things that I have and the tragic death of, of, of my mother, which I hadn't talked about on the channel here today and I'm not completely comfortable with it, to be completely honest. So I hope he didn't have to deal with that, but it is clear to me that he has been affected by this, and, and I hope he gets his message out. But I also hope he starts writing a good Iron Man, because at the end of the day, that is what Marvel Comics hired him to do, and that's what Marvel Comics readers, the most important people, and Iron Man fans expect for him to do. Because I think we could all use a little hope in our lives right now. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on Iron Man proposing to Hellcat, I made a whole video about it. I'm not exactly excited, the little, little spoilers, but I do have some very specific reasons. I definitely point out the inadequacies in a lot of Christopher Kent Wrightwell's Iron Man run so far. If you haven't seen this and you would like a little bit more information on what he's done with Iron Man, definitely check.